Welcome everyone who has joined us for today's Jewish Gen Talk with Dr. Steve Morse. We are just a few minutes from getting started. We're glad that you're with us and uh, we'll aim to get started on time at two o'clock. If you are on social media, this is being streamed live on Facebook at the same time. So please uh, feel free to share with your friends and within your networks. It's on the Jewish Gen uh, Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash jewishgen.org. Okay, uh, welcome to everyone who is continuing to log in. We're just about two minutes away from getting started. We're glad that you're with us and we will aim to start uh, on time at two o'clock. Welcome everyone who's logging in. We are about a minute away from getting started with our Jewish Gen Talk with Dr. Steve Morse. Um, if you're watching, uh, if you're on social media, we're also streaming this live on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash jewishgen.org. And we will get started in just about a minute. Good afternoon, everyone from here in New York City. My name is Avraham Grohl, and I am privileged to serve as executive director of JewishGen.org, the global home for Jewish genealogy. I'd like to welcome you to today's Jewish Gen Talk with Dr. Stephen Morse. The topic will be the history of the geography of New York City. It's an extremely relevant topic for researchers, particularly germane to those who are trying to search archives and know where to uh, look for your vital records. A few notes before we begin, as we have been doing previously, there will be an opportunity for questions and answers at the end of this presentation. Um, if you have questions that are specific to the topic, please post them in the Q&A uh, on the bottom of the screen. Unfortunately, we will not be able to go through all of the questions that are submitted. So number one, please keep the questions as general as possible. Um, and number two is that we encourage you to post messages and questions on our Jewish Gen discussion group so that others can see the questions and participate uh, as well. The session is being recorded and will be available on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash jewishgen.org, and also on our YouTube channel. When the videos are ready, we will post a message on our discussion group. And again, if you're not on the discussion group, please uh, sign up. Uh, it's free. It's an amazing resource, an amazing community to be part of. You can visit our homepage, jewishgen.org, and click on Connect. I'd like to thank Nancy Siegel and Richie Baum and Kaylin Deal for their help in organizing and administrating this webinar. And finally, a reminder 
that we do have a number of upcoming webinars as part of the Jewish Gen Talks series. Um, you can visit jewishgen.org slash live to learn more and to get registered. A note about our speaker, Dr. Stephen Morris is the creator of the One Step website for which he has received numerous awards, including both the Lifetime Achievement Award and the Outstanding Contribution Award from the IAJGS, the International Association of Jewish Genealogical Societies. In his other life, Steve Morris is a computer professional with a doctorate degree in electrical engineering. He is best known as the architect of the Intel 8086, the grandfather of today's Pentium processor, which sparked the PC revolution nearly 40 years ago. He is an expert on many, many topics, and it is our great opportunity and pleasure to be able to host Dr. Morris today. So without any further ado, we welcome Dr. Steve Morris. Thank you very much, Avrami, and it's a pleasure to be speaking to the, to the um, uh, Jewish Gen Live series. Um, as you see, the title of today's lecture is The History of the Geography of New York City. And I couldn't think of a better way to lead into this than to show this cartoon from the New Yorker magazine, which shows a New Yorker's view of the geography of the rest of the U.S. In this lecture, we're going to show what the rest of the U.S.'s view is of the geography of New York City. Uh, New York City has a very strange geography. It's very intuitive to those who live in New York, but those who don't are very confused by it. So let me show first what the geography is today. Uh, and we have to distinguish between New York State and New York City. And yes, there is a difference, although people from New York City don't think so. Here's New York State with its seal. And the very bottom of New York State is New York City. So here's New York City with its seal. And New York City, as you see, has these five boroughs. And we'll say some words about them. Uh, let's first introduce the topic of boroughs versus counties. New York has five boroughs and five counties. So what's this all about? Everywhere else in the country, each county consists of one or more cities. In New York City, there are five counties wholly contained within one city. New York City is divided into five boroughs. In addition to the counties, it has five boroughs and each borough is a county with possibly a different name. So you may be wondering why do we have both boroughs and counties? Well, that they weren't always the same and we'll see the as we go through the history, how the boroughs, how the boroughs came about and how the counties came about. <clears throat> well, here are the boroughs and here, and we'll show the corresponding counties. The boroughs have names like Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and the Bronx. Yes, it's always got that the, very, very pretentious of people living in the Bronx. They always include the the, just like the United States. Uh, the names of the counties are similar to bor borough names. Uh, in the case of the Bronx, the county is Bronx. In the case of Manhattan, the county is New York. Well, that's a little strange. Uh, Manhattan is inside New York City, which is inside New York State. So if Manhattan is New York County, people who live there should have a mailing address of New York, New York, New York. Queens, that's the most obvious one. Queens is Queens County. If you have a queen, you have to have a king. So Brooklyn is Kings County and Staten Island is Richmond County. So there you have the five boroughs Coterminous with five counties. Coterminous means they occupy the same land area. Let's look more about uh, as to how New York looks today. It's con composed of several major islands. Well, there's Manhattan over here. Manhattan is an island except for Marble Hill. And we'll talk about Marble Hill at the end of the lecture. Uh, so Manha Man Manhattan Island is one island. Staten Island down here is another island. Uh, Brooklyn and Queens are, part of, are not an island by themselves but they're part of a larger island called Long Island. So Long Island consists of Nassau and Suffolk counties, Brooklyn and Queens. And the Bronx connects to North, the Bronx connects to um, the North American mainland at Westchester ca County. So the Bronx is not an island. <clears throat> it's the only part of, of New York that is not on its own island. Uh, some misnomers, uh, the city as used by New Yorkers, the city refers to Manhattan. Uh, or New York City, uh, but the, the city is the five boroughs, not just Manhattan. People in Brooklyn, I grew up in Brooklyn, we'd say we're going into the city tonight to see a show. Uh, when we said that, we mean we're going into Manhattan, but we were part of the city, yet we use that term for the city referring to just Manhattan. Also, Long Island is another misnomer. People use Long, and people in Brooklyn, uh, the rest of New York City, refer to the island as being Nassau and Suffolk counties. 
Nassau and Suffolk County do not form an island. The island consists of Nassau, Suffolk, Queens, and Brooklyn. Let's now look at the history. The early uh, European explorers uh, who discovered and, and founded uh, the New York area, the French, the Dutch, and the British. It started in 1524 when Giovanni de Verrazzano discovers New York Harbor, names it, new, names it, names it Nouvelle Angoulême or New Angoulême. Uh, unfortunately, that was forgotten about and uh, it wasn't until 1609 when Henry Hudson rediscovers it and he's given credit for the discovery. Everybody forgot about Verrazzano. So Henry Hudson rediscovers it. Uh, he sails into New York Harbor and sails up the, Hudson, up the Hudson River all the way to Albany, 1609. That's 85 years after uh, Verrazzano's discovery. In 1624, the first European settlers arrive and they name it New Amsterdam. Uh, oh, I should mention that Verrazzano sailed for France. That's why he named it New, named it New Angoulin. Uh, Henry Hudson, uh, so he was, you know, Verrazzano was an Italian sailing for France. Henry Hudson was a Brit, was a, an Englishman sailing for Holland. Uh, and that's why uh, they founded the new, the, settl the settlers called it New Amsterdam. In 1626, Peter Minuet purchases Manhattan Island from the Indians for $24 worth of trinkets, or so the legend goes. Uh, turns out they bought it from the wrong Indians. Uh, the in they, they bought it from a tribe that was passing through Manhattan Island and never really owned the island, but that doesn't matter. Um, uh, the, the, the Dutch now own Manhattan Island, or so they thought. In 1653, the first city charter is granted. And in 1664, the British arrive. Um, the Duke of York sails into New York Harbor and takes claim of it. And Peter Stu Stuyvesant surrenders, a very peaceful surrender, a, a, a very peaceful transition of power. Uh, and the city is renamed to New York. Uh, this is the history that I learned uh, as a, growing up in, in, in New York City, growing up in Brooklyn, except I didn't know about Verrazano. That came later. That was sort of taken, at, was, didn't get into the history books until um, after I, I studied New York City history. Uh, but this is where the story ended, at least as far as I knew. Uh, what we did, what we weren't taught was that in 1673, the Dutch come back again. Cornelis Evertsen recaptures the city for the Dutch, and he renames it New Orange except the Dutch didn't want it back. Uh, the Dutch made him return it. Uh, so Everson had to return it to the British. Oops. Let's look at the seal of New York. Here's the original seal from 1686. Um, it's sort of strange that it doesn't have a date. Usually seals of, of, of cities or states uh, or localities have dates on them. But the original seal didn't have a date. So in 1915, the city fathers decided to revise the seal and put a date of 1664 on the bottom. 1664 made sense because that's when it was first called New York City, first called New York. Uh, but there was a problem with this. Boston had a seal which said 1630 on it. Well, New Yorkers weren't going to stand by and let, let Boston claim to be older than New York. So in, seven, in 1977, the city fathers revised the seal and put the date of 1625. That's fine and good, except 1625 doesn't mean anything in New York City history. 1624 does, 1626 does, but it's not 1624. So what? At least we have the seal, and now New York can say they're older than Boston. Uh, since we have this confusion with the, the date for New York City, let's look at what is the birth date for New York City. Well, there are several birth dates. We saw on the city seal, they show it as 1625. A stamp that was issued, a U.S. postage stamp issued in 1653, commemorates the 300th anniversary of New York. That would imply a date of, of 16 uh, of 1653. Uh, that's when the, the charter was signed. So okay, that could be a date they could they could claim. But then in 1948, another stamp was issued that says the 50th anniversary of the city of New York, which implies a date of 1898. So as you can see, New Yorkers don't really know when when their city was founded, when they were born. Uh, and worse than that, New Yorkers don't know how to spell. They have a bridge called the Verrazano Bridge, named after the settler what we just saw, um, except here's the Verrazano Bridge um, in New York spelled with one Z. Here's the Verrazano Bridge in Rhode Island spelled with two Zs. So how do you spell Verrazano? Well, Giovanni de Verrazano discovered New York in 1524, as we've already mentioned, and his name is spelled with two Zs. So it's misspelled in New York City. 
1964, the bridge is built that connects Brooklyn to Staten Island, and it's called the Verrazano Bridge, uh, an attempt to give Verrazano the credit he was due. The fact that he was forgotten throughout several hundred years of history, and now when he was, he was re rediscovered that Verrazano discovered New, New York Harbor, uh, the bridge was built, named after Verrazano, but to add, insult to, in to add insult to injury, they misspelled his name. They claim it was due to a typo on the original contract. Uh, in 2018, they finally tried to rectify that error. Governor Cuomo signs a bill to correct the name and create new signage. Um, and at the same time, he renames a few other bridges like the Tappan Zee, he names for the Cuomo Bridge. Well, not after himself, but after his father. Let's look at the counties and how they came about. The origin of the counties. I'm gonna throw several dates at you, but the only the ones that are important are when the county started and when the borough started. So you'll hear the 1683 date come up again and again. That was the origin of the counties in New York state. New York was partitioned into a dozen counties uh, of which two of them are no longer in New York state. So there are really 10 original counties. And of those 10, the ones in, that are today in New York city are New York County, Kings County, Queens County and Richmond County. The Bronx was not part of New York, was, was not its own county yet. The Bronx was part of Westchester County. That's the county to the north of New York, of New York City today. And Queens, the original Queens County was larger than Queens County today and included what is today Nassau County. So let's look at the map. Um, here's, well, Richmond County is Staten Island over here. Uh, there's Manhattan County. Oh, there it is. There's, uh, Manhattan Island, which is New York County. There's Kings County. There's Queens County, which goes all the way out to Long Island, which includes this part, which is today Nassau County. And in 1874, so now we have the, the first counties of New York City. In 1874, New York County annexes the West Bronx from Westchester. Remember, all of, all of the Bronx was in Westchester County. There was no Bronx County yet. Uh, so New York County annexes West Bronx from from Westchester in 1874. 1895, New York County annexes East Bronx from Westchester. So now all of, all of the Bronx is in New York County. And in 1915, finally Bronx County is created. So now we have a fifth county. And to show that uh, graphically, uh, before 1874, uh, New York County was just Manhattan. In 1874 to 1894, uh, New York County annexes the West Bronx from West, here's Westchester County. Uh, in 1894, they annex the East Bronx. So now we have Manhattan and the Bronx all being New York County. And then in 1915, the Bronx makes, the Bronx is, uh, a new county is created called uh, Bronx County. Uh, so New York County is just Manhattan Island again. That's the origin of the counties up north. Uh, while that's going on up north, things are happening down south as well. Uh, in 1899, the Eastern Queens, well, first, as I mentioned, Queens County consisted of what is, what is today Queens County and Nassau County. And in 1899, the Eastern part breaks away. And we'll say more words about that later in the lecture, uh, but that breaks away and forms Nassau County. So now we have Queens County just being this portion here. Uh, Let's look at Queen, uh, Kings County, Brooklyn in more detail. And let's look at the, ge the, the geography of Brooklyn. It started as six towns back in the 1600s. Towns of Gravesend, Brooklyn, Flatlands, Flatbush, New Utrecht, Bushwick, and then another, the eastern part of Flatbush. So Flatbush has two parts. Uh, and these are the dates when each of these towns were, um, were formed, were chartered, I guess. Uh, and here's a, map showing the original towns of Brooklyn, Bushwick, Brooklyn, Flatbush with its eastern part and western part, Flatlands, New Utrecht, Gravesend, which includes Coney Island. Uh, and let's look at that, a, a map of the Brooklyn neighborhoods that, for today. So I'll superimpose those. Uh, take this with a grain of salt because the Brooklyn neighborhoods of today aren't really neighborhoods. There, there are no, no fixed geographical boundaries. Uh, when people talk about Flatbush or um, East Flatbush or Brownsville, they're not fixed neighborhoods. Uh, it's up to realtors where they want to draw those boundaries. Uh, but there they are for what it's worth. And superimposed on that are the boundaries of the, of the original six towns. And even that's approximate. Of course, it was hard for me to get actual, bound, actual streets in which the six towns went up to. 
So let's look now again at the six towns and see what happened. If the six towns were, were, were formed in, in the 1600s, and then in 1683, uh, I mentioned that date before, that's when, they, when the, the original 10 or 12 count, counties of New York came about, and it's King, Kings County was one of them. So Kings County was created from the six towns in 1683. In 1816, the village of Brooklyn was incorporated. So now we have the village of Brooklyn over here. Uh, and in 1827, the village, the village of Williamsburg is incorporated. That's up here. So now we have two villages in addition to the six towns. 1834, the village plus the town of Brooklyn becomes the city of Brooklyn. Well, I should mention when Williamsburg was incorporated, it had an H in it, just like Pittsburgh with an H at the end. That didn't last too long though. In 1840, the village uh, becomes the town of Williamsburg. So now we have the town of Williamsburg over here in Brooks, Bush, in, well, Bushwick was a town and now Williamsburg that was in Bushwick is now a town of, on its own right. 1851, the town becomes the city of Williamsburg. So now we have two cities. We have the city of Brooklyn and the city of Williamsburg in Kings, inside Kings County. 1852, uh, Eastern Flatbush uh, is split off and becomes the town of New, New Lots. 1854, the city of Brooklyn is the next. So, so now we go, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Uh, in 1854, the city of Brooklyn and the next to Williamsburg. Uh, plus the town of Bushwick. So here's the city of Brooklyn. It annexed Williamsburg. So Brooklyn is now on the rise. This is all the city of Brooklyn. 1886, the city of Brooklyn annexed the town of New Lots. That's over here. So the city of Brooklyn now consists of this. 1894, the city of Brooklyn annexed the town of Flatbush, Gravesend, and uh, Flat, uh, sorry, Flatbush, uh, Gravesend, and New Utrecht. So all of this is now with the city of Brooklyn. And in 1896, the completion of the, of the unification of Brooklyn uh, it annexed the town of, Flat, of Flatlands. So that's the city of Brooklyn. Uh, now I should mention two words that you're gonna hear again and again in this lecture, unification and consolidation. Uh, they sound like they should mean the same thing, but the way they're used, we talk about unification when we talk about all these towns getting together and forming the city of Brooklyn. That's the unification of Brooklyn. When we talk about the formation of the New York City itself from the different boroughs, or, or they're not boroughs yet, from the different uh, Queens and, and, and Brooklyn and so forth, that's the consolidation of New York City. So here, this is the unification of Brooklyn. And now the unification is complete, but it's short lived. It was completed in 1896. And in 1898, we'll see that's when the consolidation occurs. Uh, but that's, I'm jumping ahead, ahead of myself. Let's look at, well, let's go on from Brooklyn. Let's, we're finished with Brooklyn. Let's go on to look at Queens now. Queens County, like Brooklyn, is started as a collection of towns. There was five towns in this case, the town of Hempstead, Flushing, Newton, Jamaica, and Oyster Bay. And Newton is today Elmhurst. Now, those who know the geography of New York are sort of surprised because we see Hempstead and Oyster Bay, and those are not in Queens. Those are in what is today Nassau County, but remember, I mentioned that Queens was initially what is today Queens County and Nassau County. In 1683, that's when all the, the counties were formed, as I mentioned before, Queens County was, was created. And here's uh, Queens County. It consists of Newton, Flushing, Jamaica, Hempstead, uh, Oyster Bay. And again, you'll recognize these as being no longer in, in Queens. These are what is today Nassau County. Uh, the next thing that happened in 1784, the town of Hempstead splits, splits off from Hempstead. The town of North Hempstead splits off from Hempstead. So we have North Hempstead and Hempstead. In 1870, Long Island City is, splits off from Newton and that becomes uh, its, its own town. 1896, Newton changes its name to Elmhurst. 1898, the borough of Queens is created and the Western part uh, the, the borough of Queens is created, but it's only the western part of Queens County. So Queens County goes all the way up, out to the Suffolk County line, but the borough of Queens only goes up to um, this line over here. Okay, the time to look at the consolidation and the referendum for the consolidation. The consolidation, this is the forming of the different counties into New York City. The consolid consolidation plan started in earnest in the late 1860s uh, but it didn't really get 
uh, get much momentum until a, a non-binding referendum came about in 1894, put before the voters. The voters that were affected were in the following counties, New York County, which then included the West Bronx, if you remember the way I mentioned that story, uh, Kings County voters, Queens County, which includes what is today Nassau County, Westchester and Richmond. These were the voters that would decide what to do about the consolidation. They had this referendum. And the results of the referendum in Kings County, the city of Brooklyn at this point had annexed almost all of Kings County and the town of Flattens would be annexed the following year, making it Kings County, making Brooklyn all of Kings County. And Brooklyn was now the fourth largest city in the US behind New York City, which Brooklyn was not part of New York City. It was its own city. And it, so the biggest city in the US, largest city was New York City, followed by Chicago, then Philadelphia, and then Brooklyn. So Brooklynites were very proud of being the fourth largest city. They didn't want to give up their identity, but they were heavily in debt and bankruptcy was looming and Brooklyn had limited access to water of any quality. So things were not, being, were not very tenable to remain the way Brooklyn was. And Brooklyn supported the consolidation, but by a very narrow margin, only 277 votes out of 129,000 votes cast. So Brooklyn did vote for consolidation. And there's a um, cartoon in Puck Magazine, that's Puck with a P, um, of, of there's Miss Brooklyn and, and Mr. New, New York, uh, New York wooing Miss Brooklyn in marriage and all the uh, politicians and journalists in Brooklyn saying, no, 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 don't do it. Uh, and there's an, an anti-consolidation song, Up With the Flag of Brooklyn, uh, part of the, the movement to not do the consolidation. Uh, I, I, I couldn't find any more details on this. So I'd love to find the lyrics of that song. I couldn't find it. If anybody knows what the lyrics are and can send it to me, I'd be very appreciative. Continuing the results of the referendum, uh, New York County, which is Manhattan Island, they, they vote yes. Well, it was Manhattan Island and the Bronx at that time. They vote yes. Richmond County votes yes. Queens County had the same concerns as Kings County. They were also one of the largest um, local, lo localities in the US at the time. Um, so Flushing voted no. The rest of what is Queens County today voted yes. Westchester County, um, the town of Westchester voted no uh, by one vote. Uh, Mount Vernon, Yonkers, no. Pelham and East Chester, yes. Wakefield, yes. Now, some of these parts, you'll see, these are what became the, the East Bronx, those who voted yes. Uh, after, so we had the referendum, and after the, the referendum, then what? The referendum was not binding. In 1895, New York County annexes the East Bronx. Those are the people who voted yes for the, uh, for the, for the referendum. So New York County now consists of the entire Bronx. New York County now includes all of what is today the Bronx. 1897, the governor signs the charter of the city of New York to take effect on January 1st, 1898. And the city of New York is to consist of Richmond County, Kings County, which is Brooklyn, New York County, which at that time included the Bronx, and the we and western part of Queens County. The eastern part of Queens County was excluded. Now we have, so now the five boroughs are created. 1898, the referendum. 1898, the five boroughs of the city of New York are defined. The Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and Richmond. The Bronx was not a county. Uh, it was part of New York County, but it was, it was a separate borough. So the city of New York had five boroughs, uh, one of which was Richmond, although everybody called that st the borough of Staten Island. Uh, I grew up in New York City, and I always refer to the borough as, St as Staten Island. The county is Richmond, borough of Staten Island, but that was a misnomer. Uh, so the city consists, consisted of the five boroughs, but only four counties, Kings, New York, which included the Bronx, Queens, and Richmond. And the borough of Queens in New York City is only the western part of Queens County. But a county divided amongst itself, against itself cannot stand, paraphrasing Abraham Lincoln. And in 1898, Eastern Queens secedes and becomes Nassau County. The Bronx leaves New York City leaves New York County and becomes the Bronx County in 1915. And in 1977, the city fathers, after giving it, after realizing nobody is calling the, uh, the, bor the borough of Staten Island, they're all calling it Richmond. I'm sorry, no one's calling the borough Richmond. They're all calling it Staten Island. The city fathers, the fathers decided to change the name of the borough of Richmond 
to become to be the borough of Staten Island. So what is New York City? New York City is, depending on the year, up to 1874, only Manhattan Island. That was New York County. From 1874 to 1895, Manhattan and the West Bronx, which is still New York County, but now it has the West Bronx. Up to 1898, it now has the entire Bronx. From 1898 to 1895, uh, New York is the five boroughs plus, and the three plus counties, uh, New York, Richmond, Kings, and part of Queens County. And from 1899 to 1915, the five, uh, New York City is five boroughs and four counties, New York, Richmond, Kings, and Queens County. From 1915 to the present, New York is now five boroughs and five counties. Uh, so now we talk about the five boroughs, everybody knows that that is New York City. It's a synonymous term for New York City, the, the, the five boroughs, and, and they are the five counties. So that graphically, uh, from up to 1874, New, uh, New York City was just Manhattan then it was Manhattan and the West Bronx, then it was Manhattan and the East Bronx, then it was all five boroughs as of 1898. Showing that again graphically, uh, here's just Manhattan, uh, Manhattan and West Bronx, Manhattan and all the Bronx, and then all five boroughs. Now I mentioned Marble Hill at the beginning of the talk as being an anomaly. Uh, let's see what Marble Hill is all about and why, why um, I said at the beginning that Manhattan is an island except for, um, for M Marble Hill. Well, here's a map showing the top of Manhattan and the Bronx. And this portion right here is Marble Hill. It's like a finger uh, sticking up from, from Manhattan. Like Manhattan is giving the Bronx the finger. Here it is. There's the tip of Manhattan uh, with this section, which is Marble Hill, uh, right next to the Bronx. Here's another picture of it. This is the Marble Hill area. And the, the Sput Sputton Double Creek was on the north, north end separating Manhattan Island from, from the Bronx with Marble Hill being just below that. Problem is that it's very hard for shipping. The shipping companies had to come in this way all around uh, this park and then back down to make their deliveries into Man to the east side of Manhattan. So in, uh, because it's the creek on the north separated uh, Manhattan from the Bronx. In 1895, the canal is built on the south side of Marble Hill, making Marble Hill an island. There's the ship canal. So the ships now had a shortcut to get to the east side of Manhattan. And Marble Hill is an island. In 1914, the creek on the north side of Marble Hill is filled in. It was no longer being used. So it's, Marble Hill now becomes part of the mainland of the Bronx. So you see Marble Hill switch from being part of Manhattan Island to be atta being attached to the Bronx. But it remained in, Man in Manhattan Borough and New York County, although, the Bron although it has Bronx zip code and area code as we'll see later. Well, there were no zip codes and area code yet, but they, when they did come about, they put Man uh, Marble Hill into the Bronx zip codes and area codes. And not, now this is a very strange thing that you had Manhattan uh, Borough and, and New York County having this piece of land that was in, in the Bronx. So in 1939, the Bronx Borough President decides to, to, to have a, um, a demonstration and he tries to annex Marble Hill. Uh, it didn't go too far because the people, he, well, he, he decreed that uh, Marble Hill is part of the Bronx uh, and the governor, the mayor, Mayor uh, LaGuardia uh, said, sure, why not? Except the people in Marble Hill didn't like the idea. They didn't want to be associated with the rest of the Bronx. They wanted to be more upper class and associated with Manhattan. Um, so the governor, 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 uh, governor, uh, governor Lehrman intervened and he said, no, it stays that Marble Hill is, stays part in New York County and in uh, Man the borough of Manhattan. In 1983, the, the issue still wasn't settled and the court ruled that it was the court, the, the Manhattan Borough and Bronx County. This is like the, the, the verdict of, of, King, of King Solomon where you split the baby. So make it uh, Manhattan Borough but Bronx County. Well, that was very unstable. And in fact, what happened next was a juror who lived in Marble Hill was called to, be, to serve on a murder case uh, in New York County. And he said, but you can't, but you can't do that. I'm not, I don't belong to New York County. I'm in Bronx County. Uh, so the following year, the legislature intervened and they declared uh, that it was that Marble Hill was again Manhattan Borough and New York County where it had started in. Here's a 
picture showing the, annex, the attempted annexation in 1939 by the Brooklyn Borough President, where he comes and plants the flag of, of the Bronx in Marble Hill. I'm sorry, the Bronx Borough President. He comes and plants the flag of the Bronx in Marble Hill. Um, this is 1939, so he's, he's making this akin to what's going on in Europe at that time. Okay, the reason why we're going through all this is because this is, this is a genealogy lecture, and to find genealogical documents, you have to know something about the history. So let's take a look um, and see where we'd look for documents at different times. Uh, background, as you already saw that in 1683, New York and Westchester counties were created. They were two of the original 10 or 12 counties of New York State. 1874, the West Bronx moved to Westchester, moved from Westchester County to New York County. 1915, Bronx County is created. Example, John Smith lives his entire life in a, in a house in the West Bronx. In 1850, John Smith is born. His records will be kept in Westchester County. 1870, John Smith is recorded in the, in the US Census, still in Westchester County. 1875, John Smith gets married and that marriage record is now part of, now in New York County, because that's after 1874. In 1880, John Smith is again recorded in the US Census in New York County. 1895, John Smith gets divorced. Again, New York County has the records. And in 1920, John Smith dies. Uh, that goes into Bronx County. Uh, just ignore that. That's my, my telephone is ringing. Uh, example number two. Let's take the background. We have, just leave it alone. We, 1874, we have the West Bronx moves from Westchester County to New York County. 1895, the East Bronx moves from Westchester County to New York County. So now uh, we know John Smith lived his entire life in the house in the West Bronx. Jane Smith lives her entire life in a house in the East Bronx. In 1890, there was a census taken, uh, Manhattan, uh, a New York County census, it's called the police census, taken of the residents of New York County. Well, who's in New York County in 1890? John Smith, who lives in the um, West Bronx, he's in New York County. He's recorded in the 1890 police census. Jane Smith is not recorded because she's not in New York County in 1890. Okay, let's do some fun, fun facts now. Uh, beside boroughs and counties, there were, there were two other uh, geographical divisions within New York City, telephone area codes and, zip, and postal zip codes. So let's lo look at the area codes introduced in 1947. Uh, 212 is the area code serving all of New York City. Why was it 212? That wasn't really arbitrary. They chose that because New York City being the biggest city in the country, 212 was the easiest area code to dial when, when, you're, dialing on a, on, when you're using a dial telephone, which is what was common back in those days. So the, e the easiest one to dial would go to the biggest city. Uh, by 1984, um, they ran out of numbers in the 212 area code. They split, split off, they divided the area code, they split off the 718 area code from 212. Um, so 212 only serves now, um, New York, still serves New York City, but not, I'm, I'm sorry, take that back. Uh, New York, 212 is just Manhattan and the Bronx, they split off 718 to serve the rest of New York City. Uh, well, that didn't go over too big. That means Brooklyn and, and the Bronx are no longer in the 212 and Staten Island are no longer in the 212 area. Well, the Brooklynites, um, there was a certain distinction being part of New York City, having that 212 area code, uh, and suddenly they lost it, but the Bronx gets to keep it. So Brooklynites were not too happy about that move at all. Uh, well, by 1992, they still were uh, running out of numbers. So the Bronx, the Bronx and Marble Hill are now moved from 212 into 718. So now New York, now Brooklynites weren't too upset about it. Uh, also in 1992, they were still running out of numbers. So they created an overlay, 917, an overlay for both 212 and 718. Uh, 1999, still running out of numbers. They create another overlay, 646 for 212, and 347, another overlay for, 71, uh, for 718. And in 2011, 929 is created as an overlay for 718. Well, those of you who are keeping score, oh, then there's 2017, another overlay for 212. If you're keeping score, that's two overlays for, for, for 212, two overlays for 718, and one overlay common to both. Okay, next, postal zip codes, introduced in 1916, 1963, but not made mandatory until 1967. 
uh, the first three digits of the area code of, of the zip code indicate the, the borough. And if it's 100, 101, or 102, that's Manhattan. Uh, typically it's 100, but in special cases, they have 101 and 102. Those typically large, large buildings that have their own, air, their own zip codes, the 101 and the 101 and 102 sequence. Uh, 103 is Staten Island. 104 is the Bronx. 112 is Brooklyn. Well, what about Queens? Queens really hit the jackpot. They get 110, 111, 113, 114, and 116 for the different, different parts of Queens. Let's show Manhattan first. Uh, there's uh, oh, all of these are the 100 zip codes. I don't know if you can read that or not. And there's the unique buildings, uh, the 101 and 102. Uh, I'll blow this up though, because although all of Manhattan, most of Manhattan was all the 100 um, zip code, one section here uh, got 10128. So that's sort of an exception. And down here is another exception, uh, this park by the, around the Battery Park, uh, that's 10280. So though, except for those two exceptions, the 101 and 102 se series goes to these large buildings. Queens, well, Queens had several area codes, several zip codes, had 111 for Long Island City, 113 for Flushing, 114 for Jamaica, 110 Floral Park, 116 for Far Rockaway. Let's look at postal addresses. How do you address a letter to somebody? In the rest of the country, like I live in San Francisco, so my letters, people writing to me would have the last line, San Francisco, comma, California. So the last line of the mailing address normally contains the city and the state, not so in New York, New York City. For New York City, they use the borough in place of the city. So we, instead of saying New York, New York, they say Brooklyn, New York, Bronx, New York, Staten Island, New York. But there are exceptions. Exception number one, for Manhattan, they don't say Manhattan, New York. Uh, there they say New York, New York. So there they're using the county name. Exception number two, Queens. In Queens, they use the name of the neighborhoods. Uh, in place of the city. And the official designated neighborhoods are Long Island City, Flushing, Jamaica, and Far Rockaway. But people in other parts of, que of, um, of, of Queens, uh, in their own neighborhoods, they like to use those neighborhood names. They live in far Forest Hills. They want to have Forest Hills, New York. Well, a little known secret, uh, the post office will accept any neighborhood name as long as you include the zip code. So you can have Forest Hills, New York, or, or, Rose, or, or Rosedale, New York, or whatever you like, just put the zip code in correctly and your mail will get delivered. Exception three is the Riverdale section of the Bronx. Um, there too, like Marble Hill, Riverdale didn't want to be assimilated into the Bronx. They were part of the Bronx. There's no question about that. But they wanted to have their uh, the people in Riverdale use their own um, neighborhood name as, as if it was the bor their, their borough. Uh, in Riverdale, they addressed mail to R Riverdale, New York, and not the Bronx, New York. Well, besides um, the geography of the uh, boroughs and the county, street names kept being changed in New, in New York. Uh, so let's look at some, uh, some street names and why they were changed. Well, I'll give an example, not in New York, but here's a street that's in Northern England, um, which um, people who live there uh, on Butt Hill Road, uh, were, initially they, they didn't mind it. The tones had that Butt Hole doesn't mean anything uh, derogatory in British English. It's just a watering hole. But to Americans, it means something entirely different. So the people there finally had to petition the city and they changed their name to Arches Way. Well, there are many other reasons for name changes in New York City, streets that go from different parts of Queens. When the Queens were different neighborhoods, they had different names in the different parts. So when they uh, Queens unified, uh, they wanted to unify the names. So a lot of name changing going on in there as well. Um, what do you do about name changes? On my, in my website, um, the One Step website, which I'll mention a little about in a second, there's a section for, 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 for street, change street names. And for all the major cities in the US, I have a list of old street names and new street names. And on that list is the Bronx and Brooklyn, of course, um, Manhattan, Queens, and Staten Island. So for each of these, I have lists showing the old street names and the new street names. Let's look at populations. It's <clears throat> actually New York being considered one of the largest cities in, in the country and the world. Uh, let's see what the populations were. 
uh, well, first, the populations of the boroughs. Uh, Brooklyn and Queens have the highest population, they're close in population, and they're in the highest tier, as you can see, two and a half million uh, in Brooklyn and Queens. Manhattan and Bronx are the next tier at about one and a half million. And then Staten Island keeping up, bringing up the rear at about a half a million. Let's put that in perspective. What if each borough was a city? What if the city of New York didn't exist and we had each borough being a city, um, the biggest city in the US would now be Los Angeles because New York doesn't exist. Next was Chicago and the third biggest city is Brooklyn. Then comes Houston and fifth, fifth place is Queens. Although Queens is almost tied with Houston for fourth place. Then comes Phoenix and then comes Manhattan in seventh place. San Antonio and the Bronx is the ninth biggest city in the US. And well, Staten Island doesn't even make the, doesn't even make the cut, they're away at the end. What if each borough was a state? Uh, in 35th place, 35th place, we have the state of Nevada and then comes Brooklyn and Queens. Then comes New Mexico, West Virginia and Nebraska. And between Nebraska and Idaho would be Manhattan. And then between Hawaii and Maine is the Bronx. And all the way at the very end is Staten Island. So let's look at this uh, graphic showing the borough, five boroughs of New York. Uh, but instead of the borough names, I put down the state, the state names of comparable population. So instead of New York, instead of Manhattan, it's Idaho. Instead of the Bronx, it's, it's Maine. Uh, New Mexico for Queens, Nevada for Brooklyn, and Wyoming for Staten Island. What's the largest city in the US? Well, up to 17, 1750s, it was Boston. From 1750 to 1790, it was Philadelphia. Although that 1790 date somewhat in question. If you look at the Wikipedia page for New York City, it says 1790. And if you look at the Wikipedia page for Philadelphia, it's in the 1800s. So Philadelphia tried to maintain its lead a little bit longer. Well, how can they do that? Populations are just a number. They're a statistic. It depends on how you do the count. So you can count them different ways and you can make it look like Philadelphia is bigger than New York or New York bigger than Philadelphia. But by the mid 1800s, it was clear that um, New York City uh, was now the biggest city, city in the US. What about the largest cities in the world? Up to 1925, it was London followed by New York City. Uh, up to 1938, New York City then surpassed London. It was New York City followed by London. And again, these dates are approximate because different um, uh, sources will, will cite different dates and who's the largest city because populations do vary. Um, from 1938 to 1955, New York City uh, is still the largest, but the second place is Tokyo. And then from 1955 on, Tokyo surpasses New York City. And from 1995 on, uh, it's Tokyo. I'm sorry, but that phone is, is very distracting. I apologize for that. From 1995 on, it's Tokyo. Uh, uh, New York City, uh, Mexico City surpasses New York City. So now it's Tokyo, Mexico City, and New York City. What about today? Um, depending upon which source you want to cite, New York is all the way down to 10th place. Tokyo is undoubtedly number one but 10th place is New York City. Uh, let's uh, end the lecture here. Uh, and it couldn't think of a more appropriate way to end the lecture by giving the words of, the, of this famous song about New York, New York, it's a hell of a town. And there it is. And with that, I'm ready to take questions. Uh, let's see, uh, questions are down here, Q and A. I see we have 31 questions. Let's see which ones I can answer. Um, That doesn't snow. Um, counties, what about Governor's Island, Liberty Island, Randall Island, and others? The, count, the islands are part of the county. Uh, they're not, uh, a, lot, in fact, a lot of the ones that were mentioned in this question are part of New York County. They're, part of, they're not on Manhattan Island, but they're part of, of New York County. So it's, they're in the, the borough of Manhattan. Um, when did Coney Island cease to be an island? Never, it's still an island. Um, there's a, um, a bridge that connects it, but it's, it's still an island. Uh, please explain the annexation process. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I, I think I did explain it in, in the lecture, so I'll, I won't go into that. Uh, what was the, oops, jumping around, where are we? Uh, 
my screen is jumping, so I'm having trouble reading the questions. Um, uh, Dr. Morris, there's yes. there are a lot of questions here that some of which were covered, um, and I think that you graciously allowed us to link to the paper upon which oh, this oh, presentation my, is based. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Let's go back to that last slide of mine. Uh, Ah, at the bottom of the last slide is a link to my paper. I, I thank you for reminding me about that. Uh, all this material is covered in a paper that I wrote together with Joel Weintraub. The paper is on my website. My website is stevemorse.org. Go to stevemorse.org and scroll down to the publication section. In the publication section, you'll see a link to the history of the geography of New York. And click on that, and that paper covers everything that we said in today's lecture. Uh, okay, let's just look at questions again. Why are there overlapping boroughs and counties? I think I mentioned that. Um, they're they're coterminous, in fact. And the reason why why we have um, why they're all coterminous that's covered in the lecture. What's the reason for the name change from Newton to Elmhurst? I have no idea. Um, so, so somebody who does, please let me know. Uh, when the East and West Bronx became delineated by Jerome Avenue, other than than Bronx, when did the East and West Bronx become delineated by Jerome Avenue? I didn't know it was. If maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. I don't know. I thought that the, the elimination was the Bronx River. When we search for records in the 19th century, should we use present location, or do we, or do we, or as we do for Eastern European countries? Uh, county as when the record was was taken, the record is put into that county, and I showed that in the examples. Um, parts of the Bronx at different years, the records for the Bronx, the birth records, the marriage and death records would be in Westchester County or in Manhattan County, uh, New, which is New York County or in Bronx County, depending upon the year. So you need to know the year when you look for the records. Um, when we search for, oh, I just answered that. Um, what was state and federal permission required for these annex, and the annexing cons, consolidating actions? I do not know that. I guess they just did it. Um, was state or federal, oh, we did that, answer that. Uh, was there a pattern in terms of who voted yes and, and, and who voted no for the consolidation? Uh, yes, I sort of showed that pattern. And typically those who voted yes, um, the boundaries were redrawn to include those areas. That's why the East Bronx um, then became part of, of, of New York County, which would then become part of um, the uh, consolidation um, into New York City. And uh, the parts of Westchester that didn't vote for it, they, uh, they did not become part of New York City. Uh, <clears throat> for purposes of standardizing place names such as, um, okay, how do you want to standardize? That's up to you. I, I, won't, even, I won't go into that. Um, were there reasons that, brought that borough lines were redrawn so many times? There was no reason why borough lines were redrawn so many times. The borough lines were never redrawn. I hope I made that, I should have made that clear in the lecture. The county lines kept changing and I gave the history of the counties. Borough lines didn't change. Once the boroughs were, were established in 1898, those boroughs remained intact today. Um, why is the Latin words in the seal of the city of New York? Um, I do not know. Um, I remember celebrating Brooklyn Queens Day in public school in, in Queens. What was that all about? Well, yeah, I remember celebrating Brooklyn Day when I was a student in Brooklyn. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it was that we were celebrating, but we did celebrate it. Um, was it population changes that, uh, uh, and increases that largely prompted the changes in counties and boroughs. There were no changes in boroughs. I'll repeat that again. Counties did change, uh, but not for population reasons. reasons. Um, the Westchester County became, um, the Bronx went from Westchester County to New York County because that's what the, the people voted for, but that's what the populace wanted. Why is it called Marble Hill? Huh, I do not know. Um, our counties and boroughs both taxing districts. Um, <laughs> you got me on that one. Um, maybe that's not a general question. Okay, zip, this person is saying zip is zone improvement plan. Okay, that's what, what zip stands for. Uh, sure. Um, <clears throat> Uh, 
When the Yankees started in 1903, they were considered part of New York County. Uh, well, yes, the, the New York, the Yankee ball club, the baseball team, and I, I didn't realize they started in 1903, but if that's true, yes, they were part of New York County, as you saw from the lecture. That is correct. Uh, and then in 19, 1915, um, when Bronx County was formed, uh, that's when the Yankees would have been part of Bronx County. Uh, is that why they were the New York Yankees instead of the Bronx Yankees? Uh, I don't know what they, what decision they made the name change on uh, could, could have been, I don't know. Originally zip codes were two digits. No, that's not true. Zip codes were always five digits. The, the zones in New York were two digits. So I grew up in Brooklyn 12, New York, which then became 11212 when we had zip codes. So original, this person saying originally zip codes were two digits, for example, the Bronx 60. Um, again, that's not the zip code, that's the, the, the postal zone, which then when zip codes came about, they used those postal zones as the last two digits of the zip code. Uh, Philippe Luttrell, an old classmate of mine. Um, bonsoir de Paris here, Steve. Okay, bonsoir, bonsoir Philippe. Um, 10128, okay, there's the answer about 10128. It was created out of two other zip codes on the Upper East Side. I live five blocks from the dividing line. When I sent a holiday card to my friends in the new zip code, I was, it was returned because I was, used the old zip code and was unaware of the change. So yes, there was a change made uh, when 10128 was formed out. Um, again, 10128 is an anomaly because all the other um, zip codes in New York, in New York City are 10, start with 100, except for large build, buildings, but 10128 is an, is an exception to the rule. Um, uh, this is about the naming of the Bronx, it looks like. It says, named after Jonas Bronk, considered the East, first European settler there, uh, may have been born in Sweden. Okay, I guess there's no real question, but what he's saying is, why is it called the Bronx? I guess that's what the question was. It was named after Jonas Bronk. In fact, it was, there was the Bronx House, and that's why they called, that's why they refer to it as the Bronx, because of the Bronx House that was there for, for Jonas Bronk. Um, Not a question. Um, are there decent 19th century or early 20th century maps of Brooklyn, Queens? Um, yes, just search the web. Do, do, do a search for New York City maps and look for images. Uh, and that's how I got a lot of my material. Uh, okay, there's a relative of mine. Um, do you know why the numbered streets in Queens have three or sometimes four for each number? i.e. 68th Avenue, 68th Drive, and road in the same neighborhood? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Doria Kalt, who's a, a, a relative on my, my wife's side. Um, I don't know, but I've wondered that myself, uh, why they have 60th Avenue, 60th Drive, 60th Road. Um, if somebody knows that, uh, let me know. That's, that's a very good question. Uh, do you still need a passport to go from the Bronx to Brooklyn? <laughs> I assume that's not a real question. Um, do the populations include a large suburban area or strictly city limits? They should include just the city limits, not when you say the population of Brooklyn or, or New York City, it's the city limits. And that's why growing up, as I said, populations uh, are a number, they're a statistic and they can be altered in different ways. When we grew up and I was a, a school child growing up in New York City, growing up in Brooklyn, we were proud of being one of the largest cities in the world, having our eight, eight million number. And then when, when London came along and they were, looked like they were surpassing us, um, we would say, but they were cheating. They were counting their suburbs. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, yeah, the population should just include these New York City itself and not the suburban areas. Okay, can you show a graphic again with zip codes? Look in the, pa the paper I just gave, has, the graphics are all in the paper. So you can take a look there and see it. Um, I arrived 20 minutes late. Uh, Would you paste the, the presentation online? Well, it's in the paper. Um, I gave the paper online, you can see it there. Uh, well, I, I could just in interject there. Um, the recording will be available. Um, the recording will be on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash jewishgen.org. And it will also be on our YouTube channel. And as soon as the recording is live, we'll post a message on our discussion group that it's there. Um, so, you know, just use that as a plug. If you are not on the discussion group, please uh, sign up so you can be notified when that's, uh, when that's made available. 
And here's a question from a second cousin of mine, Joel Zarendi. Hi, Joel. Uh, all boroughs had major league baseball teams except Staten Island. Interesting observation. I wasn't, I didn't even realize that. Uh, yes, Manhattan had um, the, the Giants, uh, Bronx had the um, Yankees, Brooklyn uh, had the Dodgers, uh, Queens, well, I guess now today it's the Mets. See, when I grew up in Brooklyn, we didn't have the Mets. And Staten Island never had a baseball team. Very interesting. Um, Okay, that's not a question. I knew a Steve Morrison grade school. Did you go to PS 272? <laughs> no, I went to 252, if that's who you're thinking of. <laughs> um, is there a handout of the slides available? There's better than the handout, there's the paper. Um, paper on my website, uh, stevemorse.org, publication, scroll to the publication section, and then look in the publication section for the history of the geography of New York City. Um, Staten Island is named for somebody, isn't it? I do not know. I do not know the origin of the name Staten Island. Sorry about that. Um, did the various sections of what is now Brooklyn track births, marriage, and deaths before 1881? You know, I don't know. Um, before Kings County, I don't know where the records would have been kept. I guess the different towns would have had it. And those town records should have then been um, Put into the Kings, Kings County records. So I guess it's all in the, in the Kings County courthouse now. I, I'm, that's my guess. Um, do you know if Kings and Queens were named after real ones? If so, who? Yes, they were. And I knew it, but I forget now which, who the King and Queen was. Um, but yes, they were named after uh, real Kings and Queens. Um, that's not a question, just a thank you. Uh, so which borough is Coney Island part of? Coney Island is and always was part of the borough of Brooklyn. Uh, is, there a, is there a true story about Governor's Island being won from New Jersey by a boat race? <laughs> I don't know, that sounds like an interesting um, uh, old wives tale or what you call a bubba mice. I, I don't know, but I don't know if that's true or not. Um, Dr. Morris, we have, to, we have to wrap it up because we're right at the three o'clock mark. Um, I do want to mention that there is a commenter, Celine Platt, um, who mentions that uh, he wants to know if you did work on the 8085 processor. He did on the Drexel co-op student back in 1979, 80. Um, I'm sorry, the question, did I work on 8085, did you say? I'm sorry? What was the question? Did I work on what processor? Uh, someone by the name of Celine Platt wanted to know if you also worked on the 8085 microprocessor. Okay, the answer, the answer to that is no. I worked on the 8086. I was the arch, uh, chief architect on the 8086, or the principal architect on the 8086 processor. Uh, I had nothing to do with the 8085. Um, so the answer to that is no. Okay. Uh, one more, okay, why is Riverdale special? Um, the, it's not special, but the people in Riverdale, they themselves think they're special and they don't want to be associated with, with the rest of the Bronx. So they want to use their own, um, locality when they refer to their, their postal address. And okay, I guess I'll, I'll wrap it up with that. Uh, how do we contact you, Dr. Morse? Um, my email address is on the top of all my web, each one of my web pages. Uh, just click on the link, it creates an email to me. But my email address is steve at stevemorse.org. And with that, I thank you all. It's, it's been a pleasure speaking before Jewish Gen, Jewish Gen Live again. Thank you. It's really been uh, a real privilege to have you come back a second time. And uh, as we mentioned, the recording will be available. We'll send it out on the discussion group when it's online. Um, I also just want to remind people that we have a few more Jewish Gen Talks between now and the end of the calendar year. You can visit jewishgen.org slash live. Our next talk will be two weeks from today um, with uh, Adam Brown, who will be talking about the genetic origins of the Jewish people. You can visit jewishgen.org slash live to get registered for that. And I finally, I just want to bring to your attention that if you have family trees online, uh, Jewish Gen is a project called the Family Tree of the Jewish People, where we're trying to create a searchable database of family trees. If you have something, please submit them to us. You could go to jewishgen.org slash um, to submit. Also, if you're not yet, if you don't yet have a family tree online, but you want to, uh, we have a partnership with MyHeritage, whereby you can use their software and submit a copy to Jewish Gen. You could find out the information about that also at uh, jewishgen.org slash 
And uh, we, we are very glad that you're with us today. For those of you in the United States who are celebrating Thanksgiving, wish you a, an early happy Thanksgiving. And to everyone, we wish you as always good health and hope that you will have a wonderful rest of the day. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care.